Okay. Show me. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Dutch Sheet Channel. Thank you very much for tuning in. And I got me a box from Runcam. And you've seen the title of this video. This video is about a new action camera from Runcam. The Runcam 2 4K. Yeah, so in this video I'm obviously going to show you the, the content of this box here. I'm going to show you the specs and features of this action camera. I'll show you some sample footage. And I'm gonna tell you what I think of this camera. So let's have a look what's in this box. Okay, so that's what the camera in the, in the box looks like. Let's get everything out and see what we have here. Hartstikke idee. We've got ourselves a camera with some accessories. And yes, that camera looks very much familiar, doesn't it? Here, I've got, I've got another Runcam 2. This camera here is five years old I think or maybe even six years old this is an old camera this is a brand new camera and there is one visible difference 4k and that's the only physical well physical 4k isn't even physical yeah um, so more on that in a second with this new run cam 4k you get a cradle in which you can, uh, well, you can strap this cradle to things, even to a tripod with this uh, adapter. And then you can quickly take the camera in and out of that cradle. Very convenient. And you get a spare lens protector, lens hood. It's a spare for this black piece on the camera. We get ourselves a wire harness. And that ends in a USB connector, as you can hopefully see. M micro USB. And these wires you can for instance hook up to your flight controller if you'd want to uh, you could even power the camera from your flight controller the camera consumes uh, half an amp i think so that should be possible okay and you get an uh, another usb cable to charge the camera and to uh, transfer files to your computer so that's everything we get now I should explain this a little more. This old camera that looks completely the same as the new camera. This one looks a little thicker but that's just because there's some velcro at the bottom. Physically these two cameras are identical. Uh, the, the orange in the old one is actually a little more, uh, it's a little darker. Okay, so again physically the same cameras, right? Even the buttons are the same. Rear is the same, they both have a hatch, which I'll show you in a minute. And uh, all screw holes on both of these cameras are completely identical. So basically, in short, they use the same molds for this camera. Now, however, it is a 4K camera, whereas the old one is a 1080p camera. So that's definitely an upgrade, obviously. And a bit of a backstory on these cameras, in case you are relatively new to the FPV scene. This here camera, when it was new five years ago, was one of the better options we had to strap onto our quadcopters. Because it is light and full HD, right? One of the first full HD cameras that we could actually strap onto our quadcopters. Keep in mind that quadcopters back then had a lot less power, were a lot less powerful. So having a light camera was a big bonus. Also, the profile of these kinds of cameras, pillbox cameras I had called them, is a lot lower. So if you strap these cameras onto airplanes, being it uh, line of sight airplanes or FPV airplanes, the air resistance should be lower. Which is why I still use this camera, the old one, five year old camera, I still use these on, on my uh, airplanes. If you compare it to a GoPro, a session for instance, the cross section of the camera is a lot lower, as you can tell. So again, the air resistance of this camera should be a lot lower. It's also a lot lighter than this GoPro. I'll show you in a second. So that is why these cameras were popular. Also, 
they are orange, so they are, if, if your quadcopter ejects <laughs> your camera in a crash, these are relatively easy to find uh, in grass, for instance. Much easier than, obviously, a back camera. Nowadays that's not so much of a problem anymore. We have uh, sticky Velcro tapes and such, but back then this was definitely a pro of this camera. So that leads us to the question, do we still need cameras like these? Uh, again, I'm calling these pillbox cameras because of their shape. You tell me if there's a better name, but uh, that's what I'm going to be calling it in this video. So do we still need this? Well, again, like I told you a minute ago, I still use this camera on my air airplanes, but they are also lighter and maybe uh, in, on your quadcopter build this shape just happens to work out better. So those could be scenarios in which you'd want to use a camera like this. Now actually Runcam recently also released this, the Runcam 5 Orange. Yeah, their second iteration of the Runcam 5, which is obviously a cube camera. And this is also a 4K camera and you'd be forgiven to think that the internals of these two cameras could be the same. Maybe differently arranged, but why uh, make two 4K cameras with completely different internals? Well, actually the internals of this 4K run cam camera are completely different from this 4K <laughs> run cam camera. In case you are familiar with this camera, setting up this camera is done with a QR code, right? You, you have an app for this camera and uh, the app generates a QR code. You then show the camera that QR code and that's the setup procedure. This one has a Wi-Fi connectivity. Yeah, so uh, just like the old 1080p version of the Runcam 2 actually. So that did throw me a little bit of a curveball. There's no downside really to it, even though I definitely do like the QR setup procedure of these cameras. But well, this works, right? You have the added bonus of having a live viewfinder to see what the camera actually sees. So maybe for other scenarios, this camera would work out better. There's one other benefit to this Runcam 2. The battery is actually removable via this hatch at the back. You can access the memory card from the back over here, which is then protected with that hatch. But also you can remove the battery. And uh, maybe if you are on a trip, you can uh, have yourselves more than one battery. You can also run this camera without the battery. What? Run the camera without the battery? Yes. If you hook up this cable to your quadcopter and again have power fed into the USB port via this cable, you can strap this camera onto your airplane, for instance, and save yourself the weight of that battery. So that might be a potential benefit of this 4K camera from Runcam. So I mentioned that the setup procedure for this camera is um, via Wi-Fi with an app, with the Runcam app. So for that you need to obviously switch on your camera, long press, well medium press, and you could probably hear, well let me actually let you hear that again. The camera has audible feedback and that's actually an improvement over the, the normal, the old run cam. Too. much louder and it is important if you want to do things with your camera outdoors start a recording for instance the audible feedback is a lot better and outdoors you will probably see this this LED ring that LED ring it might not be as visible in direct sunlight right so it is definitely important that uh, the there is audible feedback okay once the camera is on you single press this wifi button a longer press will put the camera into photo mode so short press and hopefully it'll show up in the video but the wifi led is now blinking then you go ahead and connect your phone to the Wi-Fi access point. 
So you look that up and it's called RC2 minus 4K underscore F96342. All right, click on that and you'll be asked for a password. I have already connected my phone to this camera, but the password is 12345678900. Pretty simple. And I'm now connected. Done. Oops, like so. And then we go to the Runcam app, which is one single app for all Runcam cameras. Other Runcam cameras are set up with a QR code. And this one, the Runcam 2 4K is accessed by Wi-Fi. So I should be able to connect to my camera. There you, there you go. Uh, we see a uh, screen flicker and that's just because of my uh, studio lights. You won't be seeing this screen flicker. Now one downside of this app is that it's portrait only. You can't use it in landscape mode, regrettably. So the viewfinder is never super duper big. You can get a reasonably good idea of what you will be recording, but it would definitely be an improvement for this app if it would be possible to use it in landscape mode. No such luck for now. Okay, so you do see a live feed. There is some delay, Wi-Fi delay, right? But you can start and stop your recordings if you'd want to from the app. You'd mostly use this app, however, to set up your camera. So let's have a look at that setup. You can switch on and off the date stamp. That way you'll have always have a date in your recordings. Can be useful. Auto shutdown, so that'll probably be a timer. Yeah, so I've set mine to off, but you can have your camera shut down after one, three or five minutes of inactivity. Feedback beep, so that is the audible feedback. You definitely want that. USB function, what is what are the options there? PC remote mode? Remote mode. Um, I don't think that's actually really implemented yet. Maybe it would be nice if you'd be able to use these cameras as webcams as well. No such luck for now. Okay, volume. And that volume is not the beep volume, but the recording volume of the camera. And I've set my to medium. That's the stock setting. And that won't be uh, good enough for vlogging, for vlogging. So you'd want to set the, the volume to high if you want to record voice audio. Auto record, that can be very, very useful, of course. If you set that to on, uh, the camera will automatically start recording once you sh uh, switch it on. Again, can be very, very useful. Loop recording is set to off. And that basically means that if the memory card is filled up, it'll uh, delete the oldest file and the newest file will then take its place. That can be useful if you want to use this camera as a dash cam. Power supply frequency, um, that'll uh, impact the flickering. The flickering you saw uh, a minute ago. If you see that flickering, you can try to uh, get rid of that by switching it to 60 uh, hertz. In my case, that won't work because I'm using LED lights here. Okay, TV mode, NTSC and PAL, uh, Wi-Fi name. Okay, yeah, you can change the, the appearance of the camera in your Wi-Fi setup. You can change the Wi-Fi password. You can uh, see the capacity of your memory card. The memory cards you can use for these cameras are up to 128 gigabytes, actually. Pretty nice. And you can format your memory card. I would suggest you doing so after installing your memory card. Always a good idea to format your memory card in the camera you'll actually be using it in. And you can restore the camera to factory settings and you can check the firmware version. Mine is 1.1.6. And for as far as I know, that's the latest at this point, the latest firmware. Okay, so those were the general settings of the camera. You can obviously also change the resolution. And uh, you've got three options. You've got 4K, 2.7K and 1080p. And in 1080p, you can uh, set the frame rate to 120 frames a second maximum, 60 and no 30, no, no 30. 
Okay, and let me see. In 2.7K, you can select 60 and 50 frames a second. And in 4K, you only have the option of 30 frames a second. And apart from that, you can downgrade your megabits per second. The maximum megabits per second are 60, which is, well, it's an upgrade from the previous Runcam 2. Still, I'd like it. I'd always like it to be higher. No matter how high the frame of the bitrate is, I always want it to be <laughs> higher. Yeah. Okay, you can also change some video settings like exposure, saturation. The base saturation of this camera is actually pretty low, as you'll see in a second. You can uh, set the ISO rate, uh, it's auto at default, but you can lock it, you can lock the shutter speed. Default setting is auto. You can decrease or increase the contrast. You can decrease and increase the sharpness and change the white balance. You can flip the screen in case you've uh, mounted your camera upside down, for instance, that might be useful. And here is actually an important option. You can change the field of view. The default the default field of view is white, but you have the option of, uh, well, setting it to medium or narrow. And I'd say just experiment with that. All the sample footage in this video will be shown in white. So that's the, the setup app for this camera. So because this new Runcam 2 4K looks so similar to the, the old version, to the previous version, I had me two questions about this camera. What is the field of view like? Has that changed at all? Or maybe is it the same, more narrow? What is that like? And is it actually really 4K? You might be wondering. Maybe they just uh, upscaled the image, right? Maybe this is just uh, shooting at uh, 1080p and they upscaled uh, the image to 4K and uh, presto. <laughs> yeah, so that's what two questions I had. For that, we need to look at some sample footage. So let's have a looky. So what you see here is uh, actually two videos and the top part of this video is from the old camera. So the Runcam 2 Full HD from five years ago. Still works fine, as you can tell. And the bottom part of the image is from the new Runcam 2 4K. And it's recording at 4K, 30 frames a second. Obviously, I've squashed down both of the videos here to uh, show them top to bottom. And uh, let me see. Yeah, the first thing you will notice is that the saturation is, a well, it's not a lot lower, but it is definitely lower in the new Runcam 2 4K, right? Apparent from, well, everything, basically, the, the green parts of this image, but uh, mostly from the sky. And... The second thing, well, if you pay attention to it at least, <laughs> you can definitely see that the field of view of this new Runcam 2 4K is a little bigger, which is uh, definitely welcome, right? Most people will uh, enjoy the bigger field of view. It is more bigger in uh, height. You can see that from the trees on your right, for instance, or on the building in the middle of the screen here. But it's also wider. You see uh, co things come into view sooner on the bottom side of the image here, for instance. So both, again, both the, the height of what you see is bigger and the width is bigger on the new Runcam 2 4K. So very nice. To me, this is definitely an improvement. Now for the detailing. So is this actually a 4k camera i shot me some detail shots and i'll jump to that right now of this uh, flower field and the difference is enormous basically very apparent it is definitely not just an upscaled image this is uh, this new camera definitely has a 4k sensor which is which is nice i would have liked it to have a 60 frames a second sensor at 4k but yeah, this still is a budget camera. It costs, uh, well, approximately $100. But again, I am happy to see that the detailing is there. There is a, a definitely a lot more detail in the image from this new Runcam 2 4K. 
one more top to bottom. Uh, I wanted to say side by side, but yeah, <laughs> top to bottom. Okay, in this sample, the new Runcam 2 4K is actually recording in 2.7K, so it's it's second resolution, if you will, but in 60 frames a second. And I'm driving my bicycle here on a cobbly road, quite bumpy, as you can probably tell. So what I'm t uh, testing here is if I see any uh, jello in recording. And so for this test, it's important to know that both of the cameras are actually recording in 60 frames a second. And I don't see any jello. So that's, that's nice. So as of now, there is no ND filters available for this camera yet. Maybe in the future there will. You should be wary of that. If you have a, a quadcopter that's vibrating or maybe even an airplane that vibrates a lot, I suggest shooting your videos in 2.7K at 60 frames a second. The most important part of that is the 60 frames a second. That'll prevent you from seeing jello in your recordings. Or add an ND filter once those are available. By then you can use the camera on uh, vibrating quadcopters and such at 30 frames a second as well. Just so you know. And for the rest this video, uh, yeah, I did do me this test also to see if the field of view would change. Could have been right that uh, the new Runcam 2 4K would shoot at a different field of view in 2.7K. It doesn't. The field of view at 4K is the same as in 2.7K. So that's good to know you retain that bigger field of view in the 2.7K 60 frames a second mode. Very, very nice. So as mentioned, uh, the shape of this camera is one of the reasons uh, for its existence, if you will. Second reason or second selling point for this camera should be its weight or its lack of its low weight. So let's see what the weight of this camera is compared to other action cameras. Let's actually start with a Runcam Session 5, which uh, comes in at 72 grams. 72 grams. Then we have the new Runcam 5 Orange, which is, as you can see, significantly lighter. 56 grams only. 56. Then 50. So it's actually not as big a difference from this Runcam 5 as I as it feels like. This camera definitely feels a lot lighter. But yeah, uh, okay, approximately 6-7 gr grams compared to this Cube camera. It is lighter and again, especially if you hook that up to your FPV setup with this USB cable, you can then remove the battery. Let's actually see what the camera weighs in at without its battery. Um, I am including the, the back door for, well, to protect the electronics. There, 30, well, 35, 35 and a half grams more or less. So yeah, if you'd add this camera to your FPV airplane and then hook it up with this USB cable, uh, you do have to add that cable of course, 36 grams, very, very light. Right? That is a, a light setup for an, uh, a 4K recorder and an FPV camera. Okay, in the description of this here video, I'll include a link to a playlist of my, all my recordings from this camera. So unedited recordings. Uh, go have a look and I'll add videos as I go along to that playlist. Funny side note, by the way, I had intended to just shoot a first look at this camera today, but it turns out to be a review. Yeah, <laughs> so sometimes that happens when you are shooting a video. Okay, so uh, what are my thoughts on this camera? Will I be actually using this camera? And who do I think this camera is actually for? Well, I will definitely be using this camera for my FPV airplanes or maybe even uh, line of sight airplanes as I have been using the old version of this camera for years. With pleasure, actually, I still like using this camera. The saturation, again, of this new Rockham 2 4K is a little lower. I will probably bump it up, maybe, or maybe I'll just bump it up in post-processing. Obviously, you can do either. 
So again, for RC airplane flyers, I think this is an excellent choice. It's a little lighter and its shape is in most cases more convenient for RC airplanes. For quadcopter flyers, is this a useful camera? I actually think that in most cases this Runcam 5 Orange, the box version basically of this camera, is for most quadcopters at least more useful. For some smaller quadcopters, again, the shape might just happen to work out better for your build. You be the judge, and uh, well, I, these cameras are approximately the same price, approximately a hundred dollars, so there's no difference in that. So guys, that is my take on a brand new Runcan 2 4K. If you are left with questions about this new camera or anything else, hit me up a comment down below. Catch you on the next video. Bye bye.